from that little stream, it turned into that massive waterfall. And then at the end of that, it got down to a calm little pond. It was just peaceful, just a, just, just a message in that. And I want you to know this morning that God wants to overflow in your life all the things. It might seem like it's a slow trickle right now, but God wants to pour into you everything that he has for you. Guys, he loves you so much. He wouldn't have sent his son if he didn't. He had a plan. He has a plan. And that plan includes you this morning. Every one of you. It's part, you are part of his plan. And he don't want to not use any one of you. You ever put something together and then you get something shipped to you in the mail and you start putting it together and it's got parts missing. There's parts missing and God needs you to fulfill the call that he has for you. Sure, he can find someone else. But he's asking you to be that part. He's asking you to be faithful, to be that part this morning. And I don't know why that happened here this morning other than I just felt like the Lord say to do that. Hearing him is key to everything. Hearing what he says in his time and what he wants for you to do. You guys get tired and weary, I know, because I do. This body that we're living in gets so tired and weary sometimes. You know, and our spirit's saying, get up, move, get up, move. And your body's like, I can't. I can't do it. But the spirit inside of you says, no, go, let's go, let's go. When I lay down at night, I literally lay down in my bed and I say, Lord, take me places tonight. While my vessel is sleeping and resting, take me places in the night. Take my spirit places. Take me places I've never seen to do things I've never done before. And I tell you what, I get to do that. You ever get to fly? I get to fly in my dreams. I love it. I get to fly. I mean, it's just amazing. I mean, it's so surreal. I've flown over city after city after city, and I've seen things in the night. And this verse says, Do you not know? Have you not heard, knowing and hearing? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not get tired or weary. I am so grateful this morning that I serve a God that does not get tired, does not quit does not settle down, does not lay down, does not sit down in the way that we think of sitting down. But he's always watching out for us. He's always watching us to see how he can intervene in our lives to show us the greatness that he has for us. And it says, it's unfathomable in Romans. He gives strength to the worry to him who lacks the increase of power. Though youth grow weary and tired and vigorous young men stumble badly. Listen. Do you wonder why our young men stumble badly? you wonder why the, why the youth are where they are today? I believe it's because the church has not rised up. I believe it's because our parents haven't rised up to do what they're called to do in their children's lives. It's our duty to teach our kids to lean upon the Lord, to lean upon the things of the Lord. It's your duty to teach your children, to teach the youth of this day. That's why we have so many people leaning on um, gay rights or leaning on um, all these different things that we're not supposed to have in our lives. It's because the pressure of the world the pressure of the world is weighing down upon them. We need to teach our youth how to come out from under that pressure of the world and rise up to greater things that God has for them. That's our responsibility. Our responsibility. And if you meet someone that don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, then show them who he is in you. See, when you see people that are not Christians, 
you really have no authority over them or to even judge what they're doing other than you can tell them how much Father loves you. And you can speak to them how much Father loves them. There was a couple at the top of the mountain when we climbed up the mountain, young female couple. And I wanted to minister to them, two girls, young, 18, 19. And I said, Lord, how do I minister to them? What do you want me to say? Because I never look at anybody with condemnation or, you know, that you're living in sin. I, I don't even look at people that way. I look at them how he sees them. And he said, just tell them that I love them. So I went over and I was real bubbly. I said, hey, how are you guys doing today? And they're like, oh, we're doing great. And they're smiling at me. And I said, uh, I said, so you guys from Georgia? They're like, yeah, we're from Georgia. And I said, so, I said, this is beautiful. He just described the place. And I said, do you know how much Jesus loves you? You can see their countenance change. See, we don't have to tell people about their sin. They already know. You, you don't ever have to bring it up. You know. I mean, do you know when you're sinning? Raise your hand. You know when you're jacking it up, when you're messing it up. You know when you're doing stuff wrong. You know. Why? Because the spirit inside says, hey, that's not right. But then we override that spirit and do whatever we want to do anyhow. Get out of the will of the Lord. They know. They knew they were doing wrong. They they, every, you know, you just know. I mean, there's no not knowing. You just know. But you can see your conscience so much to where you override that knowing and remain in sin. And I pray for those girls that God would grab a hold of them. They both had boy names. It's just an identity failure is all it is. It's just an identity failure. They don't know who they are. And, 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 you know, and I want you guys to realize that how many of your children don't listen to you, your grown children? But how many of you listen to your parents either? We didn't. Why? Because we thought we knew it all. We thought we had it all together. I started listening to my parents as I got older. I was like, man, they were right. Man, they were right. Man, they were right. They were right. And they said the same thing. We need, to teach, and, and we need to teach our children to listen to God and his word and what he says. And when your children don't listen to you, the strategy is, is to go to God and take them higher in prayer. And you go to God and you say, Lord, my children don't listen to me. But will you send someone their way that they will listen to? Because there's someone out there that they will listen to. There's someone out there that will give them information and they will receive it from that person. So just pray, God. Lift your children up, lift them up, lift them up, lift them up in prayer. Watch what God does. Because, you know, the enemy is constantly biting at them and chewing at them and throwing them under the bus and speaking lies to them constantly, constantly. Young lady on the front row, does the enemy lie to you all the time? You feel like the enemy lies to you, speaks things in your mind? That's not truth? Is that a yes or is that a no? Yeah. I'm going to tell you how to get rid of it, okay? Here in a minute. You guys know Cody. Raise your hand. Cody on the front row. I'm going to share. I'm going to share. I asked him if I could do this this morning. Like, like about an hour ago. So at my house, I'm, I'm laying some landscaping block, and um, I had Cody come over and help me. And he's trying to lay this block down here and, I, and, I, and I, I went away and I walked away and I did a bunch of, bunch of other stuff. He's working on this rock and block laying it and I'm like, you doing all right? And he's, he's laying it and, and I think um, the, Don and Sherry come up to the house and, and I went and talked with them and I come back down and, and uh, I'm getting ready to come back down to see how it's going with him and he took off walking. I said, Cody, where are you going? Oh, I'm done. Well, where are you going? I'm done. I said, Lord, because he was frustrated. The enemy is lying to him, speaking lies to him. And I said, Lord, how do you want me to handle this? Should I follow him or should I just let him go? 
And there might be a time to let someone go and just let them stew in their own stuff. But the Lord said, no, I want you to follow him. So I followed him down around the corner, and he was done. He was walking fast, and he was mad, walking fast. I come around the corner. I said, get in the truck. And he said, no. I said, get in the truck now. I would have thrown him in the truck if he wouldn't have gotten in the truck. That's where he had me. I would have thrown him in the truck had he not gotten in the truck. He got in the truck, and we got going down the road. And I said, Cody, I've been through this, this, this. And I started slamming him out there. And I said, and I didn't quit once because I knew that I was better than that. I knew that God has something more than that for me. And I pulled up in front of his house, and I said, right now, you need to make a choice. What are you going to do right now? Because this choice, and I believe it with my whole heart, this choice right now would determine the rest of your life. I believe it was a life-changing moment. And I was stern. I mean, I was stern. I wasn't, you know, what do you want to do, Cody, in this moment? Because, you know, I said, what do you want to do now? Because this is it. This is the moment that will change everything. You guys ever had those moments in your life that would you knew that was a turning point to get whatever? And said, so, what do you want to do? He said, I'd like to go back and lay that block. <laughs> And I said, all right, let's go lay the block. I said, are you hungry? You want something? Just like this. I said, all right, you hungry? Let's go get something to eat. And I smacked him on the shoulder, and I said, let's go get something to eat and something to drink. And uh, I just want to go lay that block. And so I'm so grateful that he decided to make that choice. But even further than that, he was there yesterday, and, um, and I gave him charge of another block. Actually, the day he came back, he didn't even lay that block. We just, we talked, and we, we ministered to him, ministered to him, and um and then I started laying a bunch of block, and he's like, man, you've been doing this for a while. And I said, I know. It just takes some time to learn how to do it. But what I didn't understand is he did not know how to read a level correctly. And that was my bad, the not showing how to read. And that's where we're at today. We're not showing our people how to get in with God correctly, to do the right things correctly. And I didn't show him how to. So I said yesterday, I said, Cody, this is how you do a level. When you do this, when you, when you lift it up here, and it's low, then, then that means this either needs to come up or that needs to go down with the block. But you're leveling off another block, so, you know, this is the starting point of level. So when you, and I showed him how to do that. So I let him have that block. Five trees later that I dug holes, big old holes for and planted, and five trees later, I come back to him. I said, how you doing with that block? He goes, man, it is level. He said, no, I mean, no. Can I see that? Can I, the picture of me and Shelly and, and Cody? That, look at that. He, his smile was like, I mean, it was a trophy smile. He's like, he goes, this thing is level. Check it every way. He goes, check it every way. It's level. I said, I believe you, man. It's level. But he went from that moment to laying that block to laying about 14, 15 other blocks right behind it. Because he knows now if you get that one block messed up, it might not show for a couple blocks later, but you get 20 blocks down the road, you're going to see the difference. You're going to see the change. You're going to see the unevenness, the unlevelness. And he said, thank you. And I said, Cody, I am so proud of you, and I am so proud of you. This church is proud of you. The people that have watched you. I know you've never had a dad to say that, but I want you to know your Father in Heaven is proud of you right now. We are proud of you. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Cody, for being faithful to God. But we need to get our youth in line by showing them how to live for God. I want to show you another moment here with Cody, and I'm sorry I'm going to beat on Cody this morning. There, there's another picture here. Um, Randy, by the way, your trailer has a new hitch, a new... Um, jack on it and um so so here's cody with this trophy jack here and um so what i had him do i said hey um, i want you to load these block on the trailer and i need you to level them out through the whole trailer so all, not all the weights on the on the front of the trailer you know because it it won't hold all that weight and so and i he's loading the block and i left and i come back and and um he calls me he said hey um that jack broke he had every block. I mean, there's tons. Like, I don't even know how. I mean, it's just, 
But you see it folded the folded the leg, and those are, and those are what two ton two ton leg right there. So when it's two ton, that it'll hold way more than that. That's just where they stop. It. And I'm like, okay, yeah. I said, do you remember me saying? lay them all out through. He didn't catch that part of it. So we need to make sure that our youth are hearing what we say. Make sure they're hearing it clear. I mean, have them repeat it back to you. I used to have my children do that. All right, why are you getting in trouble right now? Because I did this, this, and this. Okay, now you know. No. Bend over. We've lost that part of it too. Remember when it used to be whippings? Remember when you used to get whipped in school? I don't know how many paddlings I got in school. A bunch. But that's your trophy, Cody. He's t- he took it home with him. He's going to mount it on the wall and uh, of what not to do. You see that picture of the eagle? See, a lot of you guys have a lot of you guys have things that, that, that are on you that are that are weighing you down. And see, this is a crow to eagle, and crow is one of the birds. A crow is one of the birds that will that will climb on the back of an eagle and then peck at the back of an eagle, the back of its head, pull its feathers while it's in while it's in flight. It's one of the only birds that will will, will do that's brave enough to do that. But the eagle, you'll see here, the eagle doesn't even think twice about it. It does not fight. It does not turn around and go, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to get you. What the eagle does is what we need to teach our youth to do. He flies higher and then higher and then higher. And he gets so high that the bird on its back can't breathe anymore because the air is too dense and the bird falls off of him. So when you got things in your life and you got people in your life nagging at you saying, do this, don't do that, or you got people in your life are saying, yeah, um, well, I don't know why you do it like that. I don't know why you do it like that. Or you got nagging wives or nagging husbands in your life. Take them to prayer. If you got kids that won't listen, take them to prayer. Take them higher and higher and higher and higher where the enemy falls off of them. He has to because he can't breathe at that height. He can't breathe in the heavenly realms. He can't do it. That's why we need to press into that. We need to know our limits, and our limits are beyond this world. Our limits are so much beyond this world. We have so much access to the heavenly realm that you don't even understand the access that you have. You need to grab it and pull it down and insert it into your today. And that's what we need to do. We need to learn how to grab those things, we need to learn how to, if we want things off our back. I mean, how many of you have people that just scrutinate everything you do? It's like, you can't do nothing right. Yet they don't volunteer to help you do it. They just tell you how you shouldn't do it or should do it. I've got a solution. If you come up to me and say, this probably, you should probably do this different or you should do this different. Guess what? You just volunteered to do it. My wife come in this morning. Listen, she come in this morning and she was crying. Why are you crying? Because she had to hire a woman to clean the church. And she said, I come in to do these things that I normally do in the morning, and I didn't have to do any of them. We're five years into this, and she's still cleaning the church. She loves doing it. But there's other things that she needs to be doing. So I'm just grateful this morning, Shelly, that, that we've got someone to help. And there's, we need everybody to help and be a part of this. Like I said, God wants all of you to be a part of this ministry. We've given you several options of things to do, things to do that, that would help us tremendously. So Volunteer. Jump into those things. Jump into those things that God wants you to do. And I'm grateful this morning. Listen. That when people say to me, I don't know why you do it that way. Or they say to other people when they should come to me. I'm grateful that I can take them in prayer. And I can just say, Lord, 
you got this. You got this. You got this. You got this. And I just keep going higher and higher and higher and higher in prayer until it falls off, until the burden falls off. I just keep rising up. Glory to glory to glory to glory. Young people, listen to your parents. They've made the mistakes. They've corrected the mistakes. And they're walking in the fullness now. Listen to your parents. At all costs. Let's stand. You guys can go to the fall foliage parade, I guess. It starts at one. <laughs> you guys good? Just being real. So the key of the lesson today is when you got all these naggers on your back, you got all these problems in your life, you got all these things going on, just pray them out. Climb high where they have no oxygen and they'll fall off. That's how it works. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you for these people. God, you love them more than we could ever love them. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to speak into you guys right now. Thank you, Lord, that they're going to give beyond measure. Thank you, Lord, that they're going to volunteer in every way they can volunteer. Thank you, Lord, that they're going to bless their pastors by being obedient to you. Thank you, Lord, that they're going to be faithful to come to church every week and not just every other week. Thank you, Lord, that they're going to love you well and they're going to center up with you. God, that their lives would change and, Lord, they would see change in others because their lives had changed. Thank you, Lord, they're going to love you even in the hard times. Thank you, Lord, they're going to serve you at all costs. Thank you, Lord, that they're going to protect the value that you carry in their walk with you, every word they say. Thank you, Lord, that when the thoughts come in their mind, they're not going to act on them, but they're going to kick them out if they're not of heaven. I thank you, Lord, for blessing your people this morning. Thank you, Father, for not going to sleep on us when we go to sleep on you. Jesus' name. If you don't need prayer, go to the Fall Foliage Festival, I guess. I don't know. Love you guys. Greet one another. Tell them you love them, and we'll see you next week. See you Wednesday. Everybody be here Wednesday. We'll skip next Sunday. Just